inside me forever Stand for something We appreciate the blessing, bro Let's go Ain't trying to bite it We create it, then we ride it We know our way for seismic And you really can't deny it We just keep on soaring higher You would swear it's autopilot Then you realize tone and shift And made a living off a of fly We are the wave And it's bigger than the moment It's a movement that's progressing Like the trucks stick on opponents it's time to stake our claim, it's time to bring the pain We're battle tested, now it's time to show it ain't a game It's time to make a lane, a different vibe, another way We're known for killing shit, we even help them pick their graves We're breaking free and chains and running towards the daylight The victories in plain sight, we're taking fight to reach heights These boys are tired of waiting, tired of playing, time to go This vibe's been percolating, gaining steam to explode Building anticipation, maybe time to reload We paid our dues, now we're coming back to we kicking toes, we ain't got no time for peepholes We keep evolving for our family and our peoples Ain't playing fair in this game, we just some cheat codes We are the wave and our hurricanes on beast mode Welcome to Wind of the Bay Let's see Jason What is going on, world? It's your boy, Tone Capone, holding it down, waves of the bay, Tampa, Florida. You know how we get down, man. I got uh, episode 11 of the podcast about to kick off here, and I'm excited, man. We got family uh, sitting on the on the Zoom, on the on the video chat away from me right now, which I haven't seen him in a little bit, and uh, this dude's been doing some work, and I'm excited about it. He sent me over some some work that's about to drop. I'm excited about that. Uh, it's March 9th when we're recording this. You know, I record in advance about a couple weeks. So, uh, shout out to Biggie. You know what it is. One of the greatest rappers alive, or one of the greatest rappers ever, passed away today. You know, so rest in peace, Biggie. And then, uh, yeah, this is going to be dropping March 23rd, a couple of days before my birthday. So, happy birthday to myself uh, by the time y'all get to see this, man. But for real, this is Waves of the Bay, episode 11. Tone Capone checking in. Shout out DJ Spaceship. Y'all can catch all the archives. Whatever podcast platform you use. And uh, I got the homie. I got the hip hop artist, uh, entrepreneur, uh, creative, DeBron, the Don Kane on uh, this night, on tonight's Waves of the Bay, man. So welcome to the party, uh, DeBron. What it is, what it is. Good to see you, man. How you living? I can't complain, man. Just being busy, productive, like trying to, trying to exercise my creative juices this year, I would say for the most part, like just really learning, getting our hands to everything and um, trying to learn a lot. Bet, bet, bet. And that's the thing about you, man. You always soaking in knowledge and as long as I've known you. So I've actually known this cat right here for to this 2022 right now. Oh, shit. Probably about eight, yeah, nine years now. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's about nine. <laughs> Crazy, like man. 13. Yeah. Crazy, man. Yeah, I've seen him grow uh, as an artist. I've seen him grow as a man. And uh, I'm happy to have him on tonight's show, man. Like, for real, I don't really have any direction, any questions to ask you. You know, I like to do it. I just like to chop it up and just have a conversation with you. And I know you're a very interesting dude at the same time. So I figure uh, let's go ahead and start by having you uh, let the world know who DeBron, is, uh, who DeBron Kane is. All right, so that's like my least favorite question. <laughs> I know it. Like I love it. Who you're are an you? introvert. You yeah, don't like right. talking about yourself, <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> who are you? Well, let me... In simple who terms, the hell is this dude? King. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> why, why the fuck y'all should give a fuck about the Brian King? Right. Uh, the Brian King? What? <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck is him? Why he call himself King? Nigga, <laughs> 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 like, you ain't no King. But, but, is that yeah, Kendrick? Most... <laughs> 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 but yeah, man, I'm just... I'm a creative uh, hip hop artist, songwriter. I like to say that because like, I don't like to limit myself. Um, entrepreneur, father, uh, husband, like all, like you know all that. Like the Brian right. Kane in general is just somebody who like I like looking at the world through a a wide lens and just always 
different perspectives and just taking shit in. But that's all I can pretty much say who I am. I mean, I think my music speaks for itself of learning who I am and people around me know, but shit, that's all I can really give you <laughs> if I had to put it in words. Oh, man. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, we're about to have some fun with this interview here because I'm just going to play off of you. So when you say the music tells people about you, what's the message it gives them? I mean, that it can be diverse as hell. So, like, it depends on which brand can you give. You talking about raising the glass ceiling and you talking about uh, pushing past boundaries. Like, you talking about coming from, like, poverty and low, low income like household, like just the lower parts of your city and still finding a way to just like bounce back. You talking about shit. <laughs> man, that's very it's, it's a lot, man. Like if you wanna if you wanna get into trial and error, you talking about a person who take diversity a person who take adversity that's what I'm looking for. I think it's that diversity. You looking for at a person who take adversity and yeah, you take adversity and flip it on its head, and um, like for the most part, I'm just always somebody who I like the message I like to put out is no matter how low you get, no matter how hard certain obstacles you get, you always just have to continue to push because you never know when your day comes. You never know when certain opportunities arise. You just got to work with the best with your situation. Where, where now I know you've had some dark times in the past. So how did you actually uh, adopt that mindset uh, and, and actually, you know, stay convicted with it? Um, I would say just through the experience in itself, like it was at a, I would say like my lowest or whatever, like depression and all that shit. Like it was a point in time when you realize, like, even if you have people around you, at the end of the day, at the end of the night, you have nobody but yourself, and so with that fact alone that you only have yourself, it's kind of like, all right, it don't matter how many people I lose or gain to this day. Um, nobody can change my situation but me. So I was in a situation where I was forced to push myself and get out of that lower part just to finally capitalize and um, make the best of my situation. It was like nobody could help me. But me, and at the end of the day, that's that's what it all comes down to is, like, sometimes you have family. Some people don't got family. Some people don't got friends and shit like that mm -hmm. that can help them out certain times. Some people do have it, but it's not, like, people ain't dependable. So it's one of those things where you shouldn't always depend on people. Like, depend on, you always count on yourself. Like, you can never do wrong by yourself because you can't let, you can let yourself down, but the only way you can let yourself down is if you just let up all together. If you keep pushing, keep going, like, you can't let yourself down. You should always want to bet on yourself, right? Yes, sir. That's how I feel <laughs> about it, man. And, and that's what I'm hearing from you. And it's kind of crazy because I was actually going to have you, you know, go through some of the albums and just explain your mindset uh, when you created them. And you kind of just went along and answered that question for me anyway, so that's cool. But I know you have a new project on the way, and I'm excited about it. You sent me the, the early release of it, and I, I've been bumping it, and, you know, I have my thoughts about some of the, my favorite songs on there. I've already shared that with you. Uh, but, you know, when this drops, when this interview right here drops, it's going to be the 23rd of the month. So I'm actually going to be able to follow up with you. Tell me how you're feeling right now, like a week and a half away in another project that like that has to be exciting right yeah. it's exciting and it's also nerve-wracking right so you you are an artist yourself like we ain't gonna get away from that Tone Capone retired man artist retired. always retired for now <laughs> <laughs> but Tone Capone <laughs> you are an artist so you know exactly what it is you know as an artist you ever have those moments where you pretty much like you finish a project or you put it done and you like I want to get some feedback I want to I want to pick somebody's brain, like, or people I respect. I want to send, send, like, I want to send it out and see how they feel about this, like, what they feel about this direction. And, um, and then you send something to somebody, and then you go back and listen to it, be like, damn, how this shit sound to them? You try to picture in your mm -hmm. head how they hear it. <laughs> so that's all I've been doing, like, just this past, like, the project has been done for, like, I say, at this time now, probably at least three weeks now, like, completely done. And so I just been okay. repeating, repeating the shit, like repeating it, trying to um, 
visualize in my head, damn, how would this be received? Like, oh shit, this little this is a little tweaking right here. I mean it's submitted now, so it's there's no changing it, but it's like how this gonna be received? Like how do how can I hear from a consumer's aspect and not just the bias of me being me saying, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, my shit all like so it's it's just one of those things like it's it's exciting because since twenty twenty, right? I've only dropped two songs. In 2020, I dropped... Uh, Full Moon. And what else? Yeah, Full Moon. And, uh, damn, how the fuck am I forget my own song? The King Full Midas Flow? Moon. Yeah, nah, uh, so it was like 2021, it was Whole Moon. That was last year, right? Mm-hmm. 2020 was, um, oh, Still Get It. There we go. Still Get It. Okay. That one was like a nice little thing. And then the pandemic hit. So then it was kind of like, I still was creating, but I also was going through my own shit around that time. Like, mm-hmm. I was turning, I was, like, turning 30 that year, and the pandemic hit, and all this shit changed, shit changed for artists, like, so it was like, I got that one song, and it's like, all right, let me build on, let me work on a project, which I'm still working on, right? Then it gets to the point where you get to 2021, and you say, all right, this year going to be different, I'm going to do all this and all that, like, <laughs> we're probably going to get into some of that shit, too, but... Um, 2021 come and you got this whole shit mapped out and your game plan flips on its head because of unforeseen circumstances. So then, therefore, once again, whole mood, whole mood to me, to be honest, was a B-side. Like, I wasn't even expecting that. Like, I went to Cali, shot the video, have fun and shit like that. I was like, I'm going to drop this shit at the beginning of the year just to, like, set the mood off. No pun intended. And um, I'm going to drop it off at the but beginning of the year. Keep people engaged, man. Have people pique their interest. Exactly. And then I'm going to come with some harder shit throughout the year. And certain mm-hmm. things didn't play out for like for certain reasons, but now get to this point with this project, it feels good because it's like, all right, damn, my last project was the Dark Out, and that was 2019. And so it's like it was an EP. Well, obviously, like the textbook definition is not an EP because it has to be six songs or less. It was mm-hmm. seven. Well, the dark was eight because I had a bonus. But both of them, it was like less than 30 minutes. So I consider an EP still, but whatever. So with this yeah. one, it's like, I can give them a body of work. There's certain artists that like to play the singles game. And it's like, I get it. I was going to play that game last year. I was going to play the singles game, throw a few out there, hit it with the project. But I'm still one of those traditional types. Like you mentioned Kendrick early. He's one of them types. Like Kendrick still respects and loves the art of it. So you see Kendrick still competing on a level lyrically. You still him. You still see him giving mm-hmm. a fuck about album concepts and stuff like that. So with this one, there's no real concept to it. There's a there's a uh, message behind it, but it's not necessarily a real concept to it. It's just more so of a messaging surrounding it, and it's just exciting to release it because now it's like I can show y'all the different shit I've been working on. Like, some of these are just kind of like, look, some of this is going to be on the album, and then I say, fuck it, let's redo it. And a lot of shit right. is brand new. So it's like, all right, I can show you what I'm working on, and I can, like, you know, put some stuff that's not going to make the project um, on this thing. And for me, it's like, all right, mixtapes don't exist no more because of streaming. Like, you see certain people, they mm-hmm. put in their, they trying to put their mixtapes on streaming. For me... This is my, uh, without it being like a mixtape, this is my version of like Wayne Dedication or The Drought Is Over, all that, without the industry beats and shit. Or maybe like my Friday Night Lights, like Cole, uh, mm. The Warm Up. Like, this is my version of that because it's like, I'll go, yeah, I'll go back to the Wayne one. Like, he has Dedication 1, Dedication 2, Dedication 3. Like, it keeps going. Like, with this, this gives me opportunity now while I'm working on the album. Whenever I get inspiration to create some separate shit, like now I have the opportunity to just play with it. Oh, this King one, we're gonna do King two eventually too. We're gonna do King three. We're gonna keep it going, and just it keep just on building on it. Exactly, and this gives me mm-hmm. opportunity to keep feeding my fans, keep feeding people who check for me, like just keep feeding the music while they're waiting on me getting a body of work together. Because at the end of the day, my favorite part is when a real concept comes together and the messaging comes across and you just see a real, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A real, um, <laughs> I'm striking a blank again. Um, cohesive. 
cohesive, okay. a real cohesive project. And so I'm currently working on my cohesive bit, but this right here for me is just another way to release something creative, something diverse, and touch on all of my sides of my fan base and maybe read some new fan bases. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just give, instead of feeding y'all one song, I'm making up for feeding y'all two songs in two years. Like, I love making music. I love putting music out. But at the same time, like, you have to, I like putting out a lot of, I like bodies of work. That's, that's like my, that's my gameplay at the end of the day. It's funny you should say that because just like I mentioned Kendrick, like, I feel like if Kendrick was going to drop on the same day as, let's say, like, Jay, Cole, Drake, like, the first person I'm going to listen to is Kendrick, probably nine out of ten times, because he always puts some type of a, 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 a strong project, just like you said, a cohesive project together, and it's like, I want to see what and the creativity he's about to come with. Plus, he doesn't drop all the time either. So, you know, when Kendrick drops, it's like, yo, I need to pay attention to this, man. But, yeah, and that's pretty much how I feel about you, man. Like, with all the older, I mean, like, trial and error, I mean, matter of fact, let's do it like this, man. I know there's a lot of people out here waiting for new music from you. So what do you have as a word to the fans out there? As a word to the fans, uh, I would say... Uh, the the wait is over. That's that's the first message again, right? The wait is over. I will say, apologize to people that was checking for me that was waiting. I said, it's coming, it's coming. And then it didn't come like it was supposed to. So deadlines is a motherfucker. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> paperwork is a motherfucker. So mm-hmm. I would say, apologize for the wait. But I'm going to make it up to y'all because I'm going I'm to keep delivering. Like, I'm going to keep delivering. I'm going to keep dropping. I'm not going to oversaturate it. But I'm going to give y'all enough where it's like it don't feel like he left a long time and all that, you know, because even me as a uh, independent, like upcoming artist, like I'm still up and coming or whatever, like me being an upcoming independent artist, it's e- the the attention span these days is real short. Like that shit is it's a microwave error. Out like, of sight, I'm out of mind. Here. Exactly. Out of sight, out of mind. And people forget. And I mm-hmm. honestly feel like I feel like a lot of people have forgot out of sight, out of mind. And it's it's not necessarily like there's people who I know there's people who haven't forgotten that's waiting. But then there's the new ones who maybe just caught on. Maybe you just caught on with the dark album or a whole mood or still get it. And you like what's coming next? And then it don't come fast enough and they move on to the next shit. I'm mm-hmm. we saying albums you, like how many like dope ass projects drop? last year before this new year came too like, many too many too many but at the same time you saying it just go like this just go mm-hmm. barely any of that shit is living even some of the big artists like clb um i don't see as many people talking about it mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. saying that his shit still ain't streaming crazy because it's straight it's gonna stream but you don't see people talk about it like that um right like it's a bunch of fucking projects that come and it's just gone so in this microwave era where projects come and go, like me being somebody who's going to come up still is trying to grasp a habitual super fan base. I can't take breaks like Kendrick or like Cole or um, wait in between time. I have to keep striking while the iron is hot. And sometimes I mean, you may pick up people along the way who's patient enough to wait, but attention span is everything. And, you want to keep feeding the people so they out of sight, like you said, out of sight, out of mind. But once you come back, you make them remember, though. So that's my next. You got to flex on their ass, man. You got to stunt, man. That's the reason why you, that's why they call you king. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to, you got to do king <laughs> exactly. things if you call yourself king. Exactly. King. That's what's up. They got you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is the Ways of the Day podcast, uh, episode 11, uh, Isaiah Thomas episode. I got the Bron to Don Kane right here, holding it down, St. Pete, Florida, hip-hop artist, uh, creative individual right here, man. I see you creating your own merchandise. I actually Googled you not too long ago, and all of the Bron Kane merch, the hats, the... <laughs> All that stuff popped up, and I was like, "Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up." So let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the music business now. 
I know you've ran into some unforeseen circumstances, as you mentioned earlier. Um, without going too far into detail about that, I want to know, like, how did that impact your outlook as an artist? Man, so when I tell you, 2021 was a big, like, blow, big lessons for me, like, for many different reasons. And I, I can't, I'll go into a little detail, but not too much. There's still some shit that I still want to say, and I can't. I yeah. can. Don't get me I caught up on, do no, on no NDA <laughs> type shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. Well, there's, that's the thing. There's no NDAs with this certain situation, but I'm going to be, I'm going to keep it cool. I'm going to be classy about it. As many times I've wanted to drop names and shit like that. But let's just put it this way. So 2021, it was like, it started off very well because I not only signed a distribution deal with Stash House, then I first signing that deal that I was approached with, that I was approached with, um, I also ended up signing a management contract with somebody that I thought I trusted for a few years now. And without going into too much detail, um, I did read the contract, but it was very basic. But what I did learn was you should always have an attorney. Like, no matter how much you trust the person, you have an attorney read it from top to bottom because it's not necessarily that the contract was bad in the sense that um, I was getting fucked. It was more so of like the wording on it, the shit that it didn't say can harm you just mm -hmm. as much as the shit that it does say. And so it was just funny wording on it. Uh, some of it couldn't hold up because Florida laws and shit. And I'm glad I like do my research. And so it's one of those things where it's like, uh, I seen the intent behind what you did, but the irony was like, so basically just to put it out there, um, I signed a management contract with somebody who can't be trusted, but I trusted them for a couple of years. And the red flags was there. Certain people warned me about this individual uh, prior to, but I was like, maybe everybody got a different story. I'm, I always try to see the best of everybody and give a benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. There's always miscommunication. There's misunderstandings, whatever. So fast forward, I get in a contract with this person and somebody else I know who's also under contract with this person is getting fucked over from a different perspective monetarily and so that news got back to me and i didn't jump on it like hey you doing so and so i mm -hmm. i asked certain questions i know how to um dance around something without i know how to get the answers out of you without asking what i want to know and it was certain things that i um found out with that situation so we had i had an attorney involved and all that and luckily like the shit lasted till about September of last year. And I finally got out of the shit. Either way, it was going to happen. Like, and luckily it was a one year contract. Mm -hmm. with, it had funny wording though, to extend past that. But luckily, um, let's just say my attorney, like, like <laughs> definitely hooked me up. And so I learned like, all right, no matter what it is, no matter the situation, like I know, to have the attorney look over it, but even if I trust somebody, even if it seems mm -hmm. like a one, two page, simple ass contract, you want to read it top to bottom and still have it double checked by somebody because there's legal terms that matter. And for me, what I learned is like, the business doesn't fucking love you. No matter what it is, there's vultures everywhere. Like, that's the business. Everywhere. Yeah, like, I've had lessons before where I learned, like, people are predatory on artists, but this was the biggest lesson because it could have been uglier than what it was. And mm -hmm. it basically set me back for the whole year. I had, I still could have did what I wanted to, but for the sake of contractual things, me being under contract, um, and certain, like, just certain things that I wanted to do too much. Uh, I was like, I'm not going to drop music because at the end of the day, this needs to be solved before I continue to put more out there for someone to uh, take advantage or profit off of me. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to really invest in it yourself and, and, and they're getting the profits out of it. And, and, and it's one of the things, it wasn't like a, like the percentage wasn't crazy. I actually got a good percentage, but it was a principle of, I don't want to give you none of my fucking money. If you are actually trying to take 
from me or if you're trying to set yourself up from taking from me. I protected myself mm-hmm. enough in the situation where nothing was taken from me, but it could have went left if I did not know because that's another off-air conversation we'll have. <laughs> but uh, all right, all right. other than that, <laughs> yeah, it was, I would just say, a lot of chess moves was played, and um, I'm glad I love playing chess. Like A lot of chess moves was played, and point blank period, biggest lesson 2021, the business doesn't love you. There's vultures everywhere, no matter how close or cool you think you with somebody. Like, it's okay to double check that side too, to look like, say, all right, we cool, but personal is personal, business is business. And also, just be, a lot of people use the cop out business is business or it's just mm-hmm. business, but there's a such thing as good business and bad business. Just because business, just legit because you say, business, you know what I'm saying? Professional exactly. business. You know? That's, I like that. Legit business. There's a difference. So, like, you can say it's just business, but that's not a uh, pass. That's not the green light to do bad business or try to fuck somebody over or try to be predatory. Like, business is business, but there's still principles to it where it's like if you want to continue to do business with other people and keep a clean name, then you do good business. You don't do bad business and you don't do – you do legit business. Glad you said that, because that's, a, that's one of the main things about it was it wasn't legit business. It was mm-hmm. a lot of uh, shady. Flash yeah, shady, mm-hmm. janky, <laughs> name drop. Like, it's a lot of different things. And um, I would just say, like, it did waste a year of my um, career, I would say. But it prepared me because... I'm glad I was not on a, a bigger scale, a bigger contract and all that. Like, because in that situation, uh, it could be ugly for me. So now I no longer have management. I'm still, I still have my distribution deal and, um, and that's fine. But I'm glad now it's like, find the right manager. Somebody, mm-hmm. I think there was a post, matter of fact, I can't remember who posted it, but I remember you was commenting on it and you was talking with hometown. I think it was it wasn't hometown that posted it. I don't think, but that's who we was talking with at the moment. I know exactly what you're and talking I was, about. Yeah, and I was reading y'all comments, and I was like, "Man, it's so much I want to say," but I was like, "I'm not going to say it." But uh, y'all touched on a lot of important shit. Like y'all both was making good points. He was making a point of, "Oh, if you got acc- if you don't have to ask accolades and shit to be a good manager," and I see that point of view. And you said, "But yeah, you do have to have some kind of equity." or some kind of leverage to be a manager. And it I see it both ways because... You need some credentials, it, man. Like, he sees it from, yeah, like, yeah. The, uh, like, the emotional aspect and, and somebody believing in you and pushing you and stuff like that. And I'm seeing it from the business side. Like, if I'm going to invest my money as an artist in you, you know, if I'm going to be paying you anything, if I'm going to trust you with my career in any ways, I need to see what you what else you have done. You know what I'm saying? Like, And that's, and that's a fact. But see, both can be true, right? Because Definitely. the reason why I say I see it from both sides is because, like, he mentioned somebody. Um, like, I pay attention. I don't – there's a lot of new acts, and then there's the scene has changed a lot, but I pay attention. He had mentioned um, Barely Legal, uh, an act that, um, like, I've met them before. I was in the studio before, and I've met them. Without, I didn't know who they were at the time. And then, but the fact that how they move, you just kind of can tell that they have good management. And they're all young as fuck. And um, I, from hometown's perspective, it's like if somebody's hungry, if somebody's charismatic, hungry, and even if you ain't got the credentials off the bat, but you know what you're looking for, you're doing the research, you're hungry, you, uh, you, you're driven, you can easily get into these rooms and meet certain people and build leverage for your artists without credentials you can build the credentials up because everybody will start from ground zero like you don't start Definitely. off that's like that's like when jobs be like oh um you need experience to get experience how the fuck you are they getting experience you already know they used to without frustrate running. the fuck out of me yeah so so i see an aspect from him but from your end i see it as well because it's like you if you get a manager you want somebody who can do shit like somebody who know people somebody who can who's not going to do some basic shit. I said on, um, I said on the dark album, and it's funny how that shit ended up coming into fruition or it stayed true to this day. I said, um, 
the games to be sold, not to be told. Grab your wallets, but don't get finessed by someone trying to sell you common knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much with that line, it's like there's a lot of people who walk around with information that this artist may not know, the average artist may not know because they don't do their research, but it's common Googleable knowledge. And Easily. they sell that shit to people. And mm -hmm. they take advantage of artists who don't Google this shit, who don't do their own research, and they sell it to you. Be like, yeah, I'll do a consultation for this amount. I'll, um, I'll, you could pay me to set your publishing and all this shit up. You can have, and it's like, bro, you can do that shit yourself without paying anybody to do it. You can find this information for yourself, but sometimes there's people who take advantage of artists and they present it to you like the holy grail. Like, oh yes, I have this forbidden knowledge that only I have, and it's like, nah. Like, I I see a lot. <laughs> I see a lot yeah. of that, bro. Like for me, like that was part of the game that was like discouraging, uh, because just there's so many, they're out there. Like it doesn't like they can care less about your talent. You know what I'm saying? Like they just see a dollar sign on you and they're trying to capitalize on it and and they kick you to the curb. And man, people don't understand that. Like I hear all the artists talking about they're gonna move to Atlanta, move to Atlanta, whatever. I can dig it, man. Atlanta's the shit, but. Yeah. Well, you're new. You're new in, in town, and they're gonna look at you as a damn dollar sign, and they're gonna get you for what you get. I mean, it's like oh, yeah, yeah. you gotta understand, it, man. Like people gotta <laughs> easily, man, and, and that's what the music industry has become because it's so accessible. Like people are always claiming that they're this, like the A and R hustle, and and all that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I can call myself yeah. a manager right now, put you on Ignite the Night, put you on, uh, put you on fucking uh, the Cipher. And, and 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 call myself a manager that way. It's like no, like you could have just if you would have came out to the show and met me or H, you could have been on the show too. Like you don't have to get a manager for that. Like it, it frustrates me, dog. Like honestly, it does frustrate me because I see it all the time, man. But ideally, you want a blend of both of those characteristics, man. You want somebody with credentials that believes in you and that's passionate, and that's that's the way that you that's the way to, the way to go right there. Like that's what you're really looking for, but. Yeah, man, like it's a it's a dirty game, bro. <laughs> That's the best I can say. It's a dirty game. I could have a green screen behind me right now, making it look like I'm in a yacht with my feet up, looking like I'm balling and shit, man. It's a dirty game, yep. bro. Photoshop, niggas <laughs> Photoshop pictures and be like, oh yeah, I'm in Turks and Caicos right now, and like <laughs> easily. I got a, I mean, I got a few of my friends list, man. I don't trust anything come out their mouth no more, dog. I done seen him on somebody right. else's plane front a couple, three times. Like, nah, bro, they ain't, they ain't you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And the thing with artists, too, is we got to stop having stars in our eyes. Like, a lot of times we get gas, we see dollar, we see certain promises, we be like, oh, this person doing that. And you get stars in your eyes and you be like, damn, I need to link with this person so they can. I have an opinion about, like, different people in the city, different just different things, and it's like certain people think they know the way, and they'll say they know the way, but it's kind of like you kind of the same thing as common knowledge right now. Like a lot of people would gravitate to somebody because they think they can do something for them, and then like they have stars in their eyes, like oh yeah, this person gonna take me somewhere, and that person don't take them to where they supposed to take them, and. They learn that years and years after dealing with certain people, <laughs> and it becomes a point where it's like, damn, I wasted all this time. I thought this person was going – like, there is there is levels to it, right? There are certain key people in the city that will get you, like, you got to start at ground zero. So somebody to teach you, I don't know shit about shows. I don't know shit about this. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to show you that way. Somebody's going to show you the next way, and it's going to keep building and building up. You're going to keep meeting different people. So you don't you don't necessarily sleep on the the lower guy, but people gotta stop looking at certain people they view as the top tier. Like they can put me on, they can do this and that, and trying to shoot for the moon, and thinking like this person gonna get them signed, this person gonna change their life, and it's like yes, rub shoulders with these people, soak in the knowledge, but at the same time stop skipping the middle part because you never know. There's people on the lower tier. Who can introduce you to somebody who's even more important than this person? Stop falling mm -hmm. for the uh, for the smoke screen and the lights, camera shows and lights and all that. Especially on social media, it's easy to fake because mm -hmm. like y'all fall for that shit very often, and 
y'all clout tokens. Y'all get at people thinking they got clout tokens, and y'all try to cash in on it. And they clout chaser, man. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a lot of clout chasing people, especially. I'm not even gonna get started. Yeah, but that's a whole clout, other. <laughs> clout, chasing is, clout chasing is real. At For this real, point. it's kind of like networking is very important. At the same time, just stop believing these people off one thing. Let them show you first, and not tell you. If they really can get you, put you on it or do something better than you can do for yourself, then it's going to happen for you. Not, it's going to happen. They're not going to keep telling you, and then nothing comes of it. Like, mm -hmm. they're eventually, their actions got to materialize. I call it letting people hang themselves, man. Like, honestly, I'll give you a little bit of rope. You say you're going to do what you need to do. Cool, cool. I'm not going to press you. Uh, but eventually, if you're not going to end up getting it done, you're going to end up hanging yourself. So, <laughs> that's a... <laughs> Yeah, that's what I call it right there, man. This is Waves of the Bay, the podcast, episode 11. I got LeBron Kane uh, chatting it up with me, man. Uh, March 9th, uh, rest in peace, Biggie. You know what I'm saying? Right before the he drops, I'm excited about it. I got the, the early, early edit over here, man. And the songs I've heard, you sound very comfortable on. You know what I'm saying? Like, you sound like your, your, your delivery is all the way ironed out. You know, you sound like you're riding the beat just perfectly. Like, explain to me, like, the making, like, of that album. So, all right, this is where I can really get into the story behind it, right? Um, without getting into too much, too, there's some certain parts. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Anyways, let's just put I'm it this way. I'm about to edit this shit out. Hold up. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> put it this way. There's a lot of things that I wanted to do, right? There's a lot of things I wanted to do. And it didn't happen 2021. Once again, it goes back to 2021. So mm -hmm. finally, certain plans fall through, whatever. Um, when those plans fall through, it's kind of like, all right, at the end of the day, I have myself. I'm still independent artist. I still have control over my own music. It's not like I don't got control. Like, I have complete control over my shit. But you just try to... You get a benefit of the doubt with certain things. And so it's like one of those things where a lot of things fell through. So I was like, fuck it. I still want to come with some shit. I'm not waiting until April, May, June. I barely want to wait March. But only because of the submission process is the only reason why I'm even, like, coming in March. I was ready in February. This mm -hmm. project was, uh, yeah, this project was done in February. But I have to stagger it out, like, four or five weeks, something like that. Um, okay. so when it comes down to it, it was like the process of this project was like, all right, I have a few joints. It started off as I'm going to drop four joints. I'm going to do four song EP. I'm calling it four pack. I had no name for it whatsoever. Nothing. Mm -hmm. No, no cover art, no concept. I'm just like, fuck it. Four songs, Here. four pack. What I'm going to call it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give that, give it to y'all. And then I was like, all right, you know what? Let's make six. The EP can be. One, uh, two to six songs. So fuck it, let's do the full six. And I had my engineer send me some beats, and I was like, oh, shit, this is talking to me. So I was like, all right, fuck it, we're going to add this on here, we're going to add this. Some of these songs is ready, like Dwayne Johnson. I would say Dwayne Johnson I had for a minute. I didn't know, it, I knew it wasn't going on the album, but I knew, like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out eventually. I don't know when. Let's throw it on a pack or something like that. So that was, mm -hmm. I had that one. Um, Berg State of Mind. I put that one out, the Unmastered. It wasn't mixed or mastered. I put it out on SoundCloud last year through the frustration of like the whole music shit. I put it on SoundCloud. I didn't put it on streaming platforms. And it wasn't mixed. Right, man. Yeah. That one, was, that one was supposed to go on the album. It may still, I may still do it. We'll see. But I said, fuck it. I got that one. Let's put that out. And then I had Dreams that I was supposed to go on the album. It wasn't recorded, but I had it. Like, that's going on the album. That's, like, I have a track listing of The Gray Area, which is going to be the album. And um, I said, nah, you know what? Let's give them a preview of some shit. So I put that on there. Then my engineer sent me some beats. I got, like, I found, like, three of them joints. And um, 
I was like, nah, I gotta do this shit now. So my process was like, fuck it. You the king of your own destiny. And I'm King Kane. Um, that's my branding, so fuck it. I'm gonna make a brand based mixtape or brand based EP. Mm-hmm. So it's easy. King. Just keep the keep the title simple. It's very uh a broad title. It could mean anything. It doesn't limit me to what my content gonna be. King. It's within my branding. Like I said, this is my dedication. This is my um or my Carter. This is my Carter one, two, three. Just not a full EP. But yeah, this your is my mu- your mm-hmm. My bad, it's mute. Yeah, that's your mute music right there. Oh yeah, yeah, mood music. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like exactly, yeah, mood music. So I'm like, fuck it. Like, let's go ahead. Let's get thick, strong ass songs that touch many different areas and fit king. This is my brand. I'm the king of my destiny. I drop when I want to drop. Fuck it, I'm the king. Like, let's go. Branding, the branding is straight. The um, the growth. I can do whatever I want to with it. So my thought process was like, I want to give y'all something diversified. I don't want to limit myself to, I can give you the bars and shit. I can give you the female joints. I think I really got into the female joints. Like, I think yeah, it's half and half. for sure. I, for sure. But it sounds I good, though. Yeah. <laughs> and ironically, the, the three female songs on it kind of go into each other like a story. Like, if you really wanted to put it together, but like I said, I'm going to do half and half. I said, I got three female joints. Let me have three like in the middle, like rapping joints and kind of turn up like type shit. So mm-hmm. I said, yeah, half and half. Let me half and half this shit. Something for the females, something for the niggas. And, um, you know, let's, everybody going to like some shit off of it. Like people going to gravitate towards some shit. So let's see what happens. Because at the end of the day, when I drop this one and I, I, I'm very confident in it. Like, I can't wait to see what the um, feedback is going to be. But at the end of the day, if somebody feel like something is missing off of it, I can always come back with King 2 and give you what you've been missing until the album comes out. All right. I like that. I like that right there, man. I'm talking to DeBron to Don Kane. Uh, we're talking about this new project, Kane, about to drop here. Uh, talking about the long wait for music. I want to know about your beat selection process, man, because you're telling me about, you know, having engineers send you all these beats and stuff. Something tells me you are hard to to send a beat to, man. Yeah, I'm, I tell you right now, I'm I'm picky as fuck. Like, I'm probably, <laughs> it's probably, I wouldn't be surprised if you've heard from other producers in the city or anybody who said, oh, I sent them beats and, like, he just didn't. <laughs> I, was, I feel like I have heard that one time before now that you say that. Though. I can't think of who it was. But. And, and it's not like it's always, but it's, it is like certain people send me beats and it's like I'm very picky about it because like Kanye West is one of my favorite artists, right? But mm-hmm. like I'm not going to say he's my favorite producer, but when he gets on his album bag, like he does all this changing up and shit and he let the beat mm-hmm. play out and all. Like I love all that type shit. But I also, it's also how I feel in the moment. So sometimes I'll get a pack of beats from a producer and it's kind of like, how do I feel right now? Like, what's talking to me? And then I'll go through the shit. Hey, Cole said on the album, he was like, oh, um, he sent me this shit and I probably didn't like fuck with it. And then I came back to it and I was like, all right, you know what? Mm-hmm. I do sometimes fuck you got to sit with it. Yeah, sometimes you got to sit with it. Yeah, tell, you, tell it. your yeah. story. Yeah, something yeah. like that. I'm with you. And, and so it's like, I get a pack of beats and I sit with them and I'm like, all right, I'm going to write to this shit because it's how I feel right now. And then maybe the next day my mood might change and then I may go through them again and I find some other shit. Oh, yeah, I want that for sure. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, let me tell you, um, Dreams or Dream on the project. I've had that beat since 2019, I believe. believe and I'm just shit. now... Yeah, I had it since 2019. I always knew I wanted to write to that one or and do something with it. But there's beats that I'm sitting on that I have shit to. But timing is everything. So my selection process is kind of like, does it fit with what I'm currently into right now? Does it fit my current mood? Does it fit uh, the the kind of content I'm trying to make? Does it fit the sound kind of like 
I don't necessarily chase trends of the end sound, but I try to stay uh, kind of current with like the times or whatever. It has to be kind of, it got to have a place for it. It can't be kind of outdated. So it's yeah. like, well, I feel like rapping, rapping, or do I feel like singing? <laughs> Right. And you know that's just what it is. I I may run through like twenty beats and pick two of them, but that doesn't mean that I won't come back and fuck with it. Like one day I may just go through my folder again and be like, oh shit, why well, ain't fuck with this one before? That's happened many times, and I came back to it and I make some fire ass shit to it. I'm like, ah oh, yeah, it it just you gotta live a little bit. You gotta live life. Mm-hmm. It's very important to live like. That's where the inspiration comes from. You kind of got to live. You got to kind of be in the moment. Like, if I would have dropped Gray Area in 2020 with everything that was going on then, that probably would have been a very uh, more. It would have got ate up, man. It would have got ate all the way up, too, man. It would have got just sucked in with the whole rota and all that shit. And yep. you wouldn't have been able to do everything you need to do with that. It would have came and went. And mm-hmm. so it's like, yeah, my process of picking beats. And on top of that, it's kind of people try to ask me. Like, what is your, what kind of beats you like? I will say this. I love samples. I love soul samples. Like, that's my bag. I would do it a lot more. The reason why I don't do soul samples is because a lot of producers use actual real soul samples and you got to clear the shit. Mm-hmm. I've had a beat before where I actually did reach out. It was a Donna Summer sample. And they, uh, they hit me and it was like, yeah, um, it's this much, but we got to get to the publisher and blah, 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 blah. And this shit was hard, but it never came out because I never, they never got back to me, whatever. And so it's like clearing samples is a motherfucker, especially if you have no leverage. You have no leverage or you don't know somebody or you don't have a budget. Like, so now I'm kind of learning where like on this project, there is fake samples that you create. Like you, it's not nobody else's shit. It's kind of like you. You make it sound like a sample. You know what I'm talking about. Like, mm-hmm. So now I'm dancing in that bag. I love soul samples. I'll never get rid of soul samples. Um, as far as everything else, my brother told me the other day, he said, you have your own sound. And not necessarily that I think that I, I'm, I'm very influenced by certain artists. And sometimes you may hear it. Sometimes you may not. But I've never considered myself of like, what does a Brian Kane beat sound like? Like, I can't, I still to this day couldn't tell you what is a DeBron Kane. Or somebody come to you and be like, hey, this is a DeBron Kane beat. What exactly is that shit? Because my, I'm diverse as fuck. At least I would like to think with the kind Versatile. Of shit that I do. I'm with you on that yeah, shit, man. Like, I'm with you on it's that. It's like, I don't, I can't pinpoint it. I know what my shit will sound like. I know my bags I get in. I do understand, like, I have different identities within myself of the kind of bag I get in where I'm singing, harmonizing, and rapping. Like, I know the different bags I can get in, but I honestly couldn't really describe to you what is my sound or the Brian Kane's, like, what is it a Brian Kane beat? Maybe someday somebody make it a Brian Kane type beat and shit, and I'll be like, oh, okay, maybe they understand <laughs> it. But, uh, but what if you call that shit trash and just ruin their whole ego <laughs> right there, man? <laughs> that, <laughs> that happens. Like, it, I remember. I didn't like my Brian Kane beat. <laughs> Kill that whole vibe, dog. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure that's gonna happen. Like, I remember a T Pain rant. He was like, "How y'all gonna send me a T Pain type beat?" And it sounds nothing like T Pain. <laughs> 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 like just the red he went on. Like, this isn't a T Pain type beat. This sounds like nothing I want. How did you come up with that? I don't know. Everybody got different ears, though. Like, yeah. people hear you in a different light that you hear yourself. And we can't. Fortunately, like you don't decide that. As much as you want to say, I'm this and this, and I'm this kind of rapper, somebody else is going to peg you and name you something else that maybe you want to be or don't want to be. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you may feel like, sir, sometimes you may feel like people be over, um, let me say it in the correct way. Sometimes you feel like people are gassing you up. Like, oh, you just saying that shit. Like, you really think it's that dope? You really think I'm up there with so-and-so? And then sometimes you feel like people be underrating you. Mm-hmm. And you be like, how the fuck you think this is trash? Not not trash necessarily. Some people feel that way, but you like, how do you think this is overrated? Or you don't think this sounds a certain way? Like what? I go at some old shit, and I be like, y'all slept on this shit. Like you you mm-hmm. don't know this line I just said. Like 
that happens very often. But unfortunately, like we don't make that determination. We can make determination. I can tell you, I'm a lyricist. I'm a, um, I'm diverse. I have substance. I have this and that. And somebody else might be like, oh, nah, he's you ain't that lyrical, or you a um commercial nigga, or like, oh, you too boom that like you never know what somebody gonna say. Facts. Facts, man. I'm speaking with DeBron Kane, Hold It Down for St. Pete, episode 11 of Waves of the Beta Podcast. I want to know, how has fatherhood changed you as an artist? <laughs> That's a good question. I've, to be truthful with you, I've never really, like, took the time to really think about that. Like, I dropped Trial and Error when my son was in the belly, in the womb. And my son ended up, when did I drop it? Probably like in uh, April or something like that. I don't remember. But my son was then born in August. And then I had the music out. And I was probably some of the best. To this day, Trial and Error is my personal favorite project. Yeah. And that's the last full-length album that I dropped. That's the last one I dropped. I don't count The Light or The Dark because those are supposed to be EPs. And it's a part of like a trilogy and shit. But anyways, um, like... That was I had strong air out when I dropped that when, when my son was in the belly and when he was born it was kind of like with fatherhood I guess you would say as an artist like it made me get a lot more focused because I'm like if I'm gonna pursue this or whatever like and still handle my business um I gotta be successful like I can't now I have to think about. Now I have to think about somebody else that I got to feed. It's not, it's no longer just me or it's no longer just like worried about my wife or anything like that. Now it's, it's like, I have a son that's watching me that I have to feed and I have to take care of. Like it's now a whole family. Now it's a, another person mm-hmm. in the equation. So, so it's kind of one of those things where it's like, if you're going to do it, if you're going to go in, do it to the best of your ability and make sure you do it right. Don't put yourself in a situation where um, it's jeopardizing your household. And I would just say I've taken a lot more serious. Like I've, I've matured a lot. I would say mm-hmm. <laughs> as being a father and all that. Now it's kind of like, it's like you think about your childhood and you get to watch your childhood all over again with your kids. Right. Like, and you just like, man, I remember those days and it was that simple. <laughs> so I, I would say it's matured me a lot as far as my aim and focus to it. Like I, I would I just got more focused, but I never changed my direction as far as what I create or my sound or anything like that. I just said I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing, but I'm gonna do it to a point where I'm going to be successful with it. And now it's like it's it's more incentive to be successful is more incentive to do what you decide to do. And I can't crash and burn in this because I have people to think about. I have Thanks a legacy. Hi, man. Got a legacy. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I like that right there, man. DeBron, the Don can the load 11 man i'm having fun with this man it's good to talk with you again thank you for taking time out for the podcast as well man uh what else do i want to know from you i know we got a lot of music on the way when is the gray area actually going to be coming or when should we expect that <laughs> i'll say this right um i was having a conversation with my brother yesterday um he was saying yeah you want to make sure the shit is right you don't want to rush and so um, last year and a few different things, like I had a track list and everything and I end up restructuring the whole project. So now it's kind of like the direction is the same, but now, um, I'm more tight knit at getting the ideas worked out, like just the ideas on execute on it. So I'm hoping top of the year like or end of the year, like I'm hoping to have it then, but if I don't, it's no big deal because I know that I could fill the time in until I get it done. I ain't going to rush it. And it's one of those things like I can have that project and sit on it. And if a big, big break comes or a certain opportunity comes, 
you're going to have some of your best work um, in the tuck, ready to go. Mm-hmm. So the gray area, I want to, I don't want too much time to pass by because I'm telling you now, after the gray area, I already have four or five like other concepts, whether it's an EP or albums, I have four or five concepts already in my head now of things I want to execute. I want to make an R&B album. I'm not the best singer in the world, but I'm a damn good studio singer. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. So I need to see this. I need make, to see this. I want to make Kane Oasis a heartbreak. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call it. Kane Oasis a heartbreak. <laughs> I can't wait to get to that. So the gray area, I'm not gonna. The wait is not gonna be too long. But as long as everything plans go, plans always change. But as long as everything works out and the execution of everything I want and I get it to how I want it. Um, then, yeah, we can look at towards the end of the year when I drop it. Then I can go ahead and move on with all these other ventures and ideas I want to execute and just keep evolving. But, you know. You know, grew your hair out, became an R&B singer now. Man, look at you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> look at you. All right, well, let's switch it up a little bit then. You want to talk about R&B. Um we have always been calling for a Mariah Carey versus Mary J. Blige uh, a versus. So if that actually went down, who do you think would come away with the W on that? Damn. I've heard that one, too. A lot of people say Mariah Carey and Whitney, but obviously that couldn't happen for obvious reasons. But a Mary, Mary J. and Mariah, mm. I want to say Mary. I really do. But actually, no, nah, you know what? Because the, when they do the verses, they do the, also the performing aspect. Like, we've seen people that we thought was going to win, and it went a different way because of the performance aspect. And like who? if it's one of those, Hold all right, like so for who? example, them setting the locks, right? We knew the locks was going to win. I knew the locks was going to win. Gonna win. We knew the loss was going to win, but we thought it was going to be a lot closer than it was. They kind of swept the floor with Dipset, in my opinion, based off performance alone. Uh, right. Who else? I'll who give else that to you. Think? Performance alone. Who else? Um, the two chains and um, two chains and Ross <laughs> one, but I mean that was mis- that was nah. that was unbalanced anyways. Ross was one of the ghosts, man. That. Exactly. That's yeah, Ross is a legend. I I had Ross going with either Ross can go with either a Ti with Ti or, or Wayne or Wayne. Ah, nah, we're gonna get on that. Let me answer your first question. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We come back, come back to that. Come back, come back. So Mary so, J. So Mary J. and Whitney. Uh, Mary J. and Mariah. I think personally, I think Mariah got more hits. Or she has more classic hits, right? She can bust mm-hmm. out the damn Christmas. All of <laughs> she can bust that shit out. But her vocals, as we've seen over the years, have not aged well. And I don't know if that's just rust and not practicing or what. Like I don't know what that is. Maybe it's gotten mm-hmm. better. Who knows? But you just seen Mary J at the Super Bowl, and she sounded pretty damn good. And she bust out her little two step, her little. Yeah, <laughs> that Mary, that... Mary J moves. <laughs> I think in in the court of public opinion, Mary J will win that. But if Mariah Carey shows up and her back vocals is right and she's not trying too hard to, you know, hit some of them notes that she can't hit no more, then mm-hmm. I think Mariah can take Mary J because Mariah has so many fucking classics and so many bags to pull from. But they also have a pretty similar trajectory. Like, they, I wouldn't necessarily say they came out around the same time, but they was popping kind of like around. It really was. I mean, they was close enough. Yeah, they was close around the same time. And then both of them went away and came back again and had a resurgence. And both of the resurgences were successful. So, uh, I, I would say Mary J from a performance aspect. But if Mariah performs well, then I got to give it to Mariah. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me give you one more R&B right quick while I'm on it, man, because 
for the longest I've been thinking Boys to Men and New Edition was the matchup. But I've been reading other stuff lately, and I see that a lot of people don't feel as highly about Boys to Men as I do. Like, I feel like Boys to Men is, like, one of the best R&B groups of all time. Like, so let me throw let me throw Jodeci and Boys to Men at each other. Who do you think would come out on that one? Um, so when you say Jodeci, right, mm-hmm. does that – are they allowed to reach into the Casey and JoJo bag, too? Uh, usually I would say yes, but for this one, let's say no. I'll give the boys and men. You give like, it the boys and men? So if Casey yeah, and JoJo's was included, then it would sway the vote for you? It would make it a little closer. Okay. But, uh, yeah, nah, boys and men got a lot of classics. A lot of people do sleep on their shit, too. Um, somebody had the argument. It might be our brother-in-law. That Casey and JoJo versus Drew Hill. And he had Drew Hill one. <laughs> and I was like, uh I'm a Drew Hill nah. fan too though, man, but no. No. But I, I, I have to give it to uh boys, man. They got a lot of classics. They can pull out shit. Mariah Carey, like they got all the bags they can reach into, like and even still then, like I'm I was born in the nineties, so I mm-hmm. heard all the music. I wasn't living in it, but I'm very familiar with all of it to know enough to say like, boys and men, especially as a unit, definitely would have a bigger, better catalog than Jodeci. Mm. Tough one right there. Okay, so going back to what we were just talking about, though, there's a uh, – Jay said that he was not able to be challenging the verses. If you were going to put anybody against him, who would you put? <laughs> I like this one because I already – I've answered this a bunch of times. Like, I've had this conversation all the time, right? Um, Jay says that. And Jay is kind of top tier as far as catalogs go. But arguably, there is only three other artists that can compete with Jay. Okay, Unless hold you, up, hold I'm up. A, okay, go ahead. You could technically say four, but the fourth one be a mismatch. The fourth one I would say would be Snoop, because Snoop has a ton of fucking hits. But it's kind of a mismatch for me. And it's it, I, it, it, it is two different worlds. But Snoop has just as many, if not more, hits than Jay. Anyway, if we're talking, yeah, we talking about, though, from a catalog-based thing, like a like albums, all that shit, I say the only three people that can compete with Jay and it'll be a close battle. And and it it changes on levels. I would mm-hmm. say, number one, his, his best challenger is Kanye. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, Kanye takes that. He might. He might very well. And my, a lot of people don't think so. Kanye's catalog, like, Jay got classics, but Kanye's fucking catalog goes toe-to-toe. He with got it. that stuff that you ain't know that he was involved with. Like, that's the shit with exactly. Kanye, man. Like, who hit you with some shit exactly. that you wrote for Carrie Hilson or some shit and blow your whole fucking project up? Like, <laughs> And his features, too. People don't talk about Ye's features. Right. Like, that that boy got some. If he busts out the Pharrell number one feature, like bro, mm-hmm. the dialect mm-hmm. people's feet, like mm-hmm. so. Next on my mm-hmm. list is Drake. Okay, <laughs> yep. Drake is another close one. Drake got a lot of fucking hits. He got a, a lot, lot of number ones. Got he got a lot, a lot of, of number, number ones. Exactly. Right. One. Jay, Jay don't got a lot of number ones that people think they think people think that he like. He don't have the amount of number ones that people think he has. He just has a classic catalog from a hip hop. He got them hood shit. He got them hood classics. Is what that shit is. We all came up in that exactly. shit. Like, yeah, it's the B sides and shit that people gonna get gassed over. There's not a mm-hmm. lot of artists who have B sides that you like. Oh shit, Jay got a lot of B sides. It wasn't a hit, but that shit resonates still to this day. But Drake has a lot of hits in pop culture. And just in culture general, he got a lot of hits. The females, for one, is on Drake's side. Mm-hmm. Drake has a lot of fucking hits. But he does have a few things that will hinder him because, to me, he has some classics. People argue he don't got classic albums. I think he got at least two. I say Take Care and um, what's the other one? If you count it so far gone as an album, I think that's a classic. Um, yeah. That's that shit. And honestly, nothing, uh, if you're reading this, it's too late, it's a classic. As much as people don't want to say, like, I, it was hard to me get used to that drink, but 
when you see Adam Sung's age, that's honestly a classic, and a lot of people run with that sound. Then my third person is Wayne, obviously. Okay. Obviously. But there's a caveat to that, right? Wayne's catalog is good. Except if you say he can't do none of his mixtape joints, Wayne does not compete and stand a chance. If Wayne okay. can pull out all his mixtape joints, it's going to be a long day. Because Wayne does have good albums. But if you look at his catalog, his balance between classic albums or good albums compared to like legendary mixtapes, that's kind of his legacy. It's like his mixtapes is a big portion of his legacy. Definitely. And Definitely. That, that's the only thing that's to keep him in contendership. So honestly, I think it could be a toss up between those four. I personally would like to see, I would like to see Drake and Kanye, or I would like to see Drake and Wayne. But number one for Jay, I would like to see. I went in mind saying number one on the list, Drake and Kanye, and I give I'm a little. I'm a little disappointed in you, bro. I'm not even gonna lie to you, man. Like, how can you not even mention your son's name, bro? Like, how are we leaving this uh, man not, out? Uh, how are we leaving Nas I'm glad out, you bro? Said that. <laughs> All right. So you just let Nas answer. down, DeBron. I know. I let Nas down. <laughs> I let Nas down. <laughs> Here's my argument to that, right? As much as I love and respect Nas, I think as a lyricist, he's, he can go toe-to-toe with Jay. I think Ether is better than TakeOver. I think Ether, I think he won that whole beef as much as people like, you know, the synopsis is. I think he won that. But here is the one thing. Nas has the hood classics like Jay does. He has the hip-hop classics, some of the hip-hop peers classics and shit like that. But he does not have the hits. He has hits, but he don't have as many hits as Jay. Okay. And it's that's what's going to, in the end, edge him out. Because if Jay wanted to bust, bust out with, like, let me think. Like, um... Let me get a good one. Let me go commercial, right? Mm-hmm. Like, give it to me. Give me that phone, that sweet, that, that, that good shit. Like, Nas has an answer for that. But how many of those does he have? A, well, I guess, actually, to that point, Jay could bust out with the female hits, and then Nas can throw in a got yourself a gun in there, and he won that round because it's like, oh, nah, he came with the hammer. And it's, but... I just think the balance of it, like Nas' consistency. He has a lot of great albums that I love, but he also has some albums that didn't age well. Uh, people don't like his production. That's also a factor in it because versus his performance battle, and you got to think of when certain production come on. Like, can you imagine public service announcement coming on and Nas having to stand in front of that? And it's like... Oh, uh, you got to you know, come with something hard after like, that, like... You after gotta that, play, you yeah. Play you gotta come with something all the way hard after that shit. <laughs> and it's like, not that he don't have nothing for it. Nah, 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 nah. Really? Actually, I, I take that back. Nas is like, you can go with some Nas is like, or or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, Nas man. is like, Nas is like, it's hard. But how many of those can he? Because my, in my opinion, if you do a battle, if you do a versus that consists of Nas, J. Drake, Wayne, or Kanye, anybody I named, even a Rick Ross, like you said, even mm-hmm. a T.I. People don't talk about T.I. very often. They sleeping on. I think sure. T.I. and Ross is the perfect matchup. Both of them got mm-hmm. phenomenal. Like, to me, there's a tier. No, let me give you my first point. Um, if, if you do a versus with any of those artists, it cannot be 20 songs. You got to do fucking 40. You got to do 30 to 40 songs because, and a part one and part two, because that's a lot of fucking records, bro. And just limit it to twenty. It could be anybody's ball game because if Drake, yeah. let's say Jay has a very shitty selection compared to Nas, Nas can have a very good day, or Wayne or Drake or Kanye can have a very good day. Y'all got to do more than forty. But to me, there's tears, right? And people don't talk about Eminem, but I'll get on that separate. Like Eminem has a good catalog, but it this day and age, it's not going to age well to the versus audience, like. Some people are going to be like, oh, this shit, you you know the whole Eminem shit. Yeah. But Eminem does have the hit records. But I would say there's tears in as far as artists. 
right now the first tier you have the the Drake, the Kendrick, the Cole. Uh, well, I'm gonna exclude them actually because, ah, uh, no, nah, I'm not gonna exclude. You have them the top tier: Drake, Kendrick, Cole, Kanye, Jay. Like those are the elite artists, the Wayne's, the very top tier elite artists as far as catalog and rapping ability. I think the tier under that is people who can really rap on that same level, always using classic shit, and mm-hmm. have a good catalog. And to me, that's Ludacris. That's T.I. That's Rick Ross. These are people who got catalogs that's unmatched to a lot of different people. I throw game in there. A lot of people be talking about game, like, be sleeping on game. Game has a pretty fucking good catalog. I don't care anything you got to say. Like, he got a fucking good catalog. There's tears to that. I think on that second tier, you have those kind of artists where mm-hmm. they don't get the respect or the um, acclaim as like the a commercial great shine. Yeah. They mm-hmm. sold a lot of records. Don't get me wrong, but they fall. They have phenomenal. Rick Ross has one of the most perfect. I ain't gonna say perfect because it's not perfect, but he has one of the best ears in the game. He has one of the best ears in the game, and he has one of the most slept on catalogs. Like if you go through his catalogs, there's a few in there you can get rid of. But if you really want to condense his shit up, his records, his songs, albums, like he has some very cohesive shit. Ti as well. Ti, like if you just go from from Urban Legend on to Paper Trail and uh, my favorite so album, well, it used to be King. You know, now it's Paper Trail. I would say, but King, Paper you know, boom, right? Paper Trail is his perfect. Paper Trail is his best album to me. Yeah. King was, it was King, and then he hits you with the T I vs T I P. Actually, I say King is better than T I vs T I P. And then he hits you with Paper Trail, and it was like shit. Rick Ross mm-hmm. is Teflon Don. His mm-hmm. best album is Teflon Don, but they fall under that tier. They can you can throw T.I. or Rick Ross in an arena with a Drake and Wayne and it'll be like a, a Jay Z and all that and it'll be like a it'll be one of those battles where they like, Oh, this shit gonna be out in round one and then next thing you know, you're gonna see him going bar for bar with him. You know the outcome like Jay or whoever's gonna win, but T.I., Rick Ross, Ludacris, I'm probably missing some other people, like they're in that second oh, tier sure. of catalogs. That you just not like you ain't gonna you you sleeping on them if you think them niggas ain't gonna come with it. That's how I feel about that situation. Damn it, man! I wish I had more time to speak with you, bro. But that's about all the time I have tonight for the podcast episode eleven. I got the Bron Kane here, bro. I want you to go ahead and drop your social media information so the people out there can follow you. All right, so. You go follow me on IG, Debron underscore K, D A B R O N underscore underscore K A I N. I also made a sep- a second IG. That's King Kane, K X N G, K A I M. Um, same thing. Facebook, Debron Kane. Follow me on all like Spotify, Apple Music, title Debron Kane. Um, Twitter, Debron Kane, no underscore. Debron Kane together. Um. You can follow me on TikTok, DeBron underscore K, but oh I'm not, I'm active on it, but not as active. I'm going to probably get a lot more active now, but like I do a little bit of TikTok. <laughs> you can follow me on that. But yeah, just basically, oh, I, my website, DeBronKMusic.com. You follow me, if you check out my website, you'll find all my platforms on that shit. You can go down the rabbit hole, you find everything, you can find my catalogs, all that, like DeBronKMusic.com. Instagram, you can DM me, like, whatever oh, it is. Oh, they're going to slide in the DMs on you. <laughs> <laughs> you can Google me. You Google my name, shit comes up. Uh, I, shit I, comes I, up. I co-signed that one. I actually did it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's where you can check me out, man, all platforms, uh, streaming platforms, Twitter, IG. I'm most active on IG. And, um... I'm trying to get my idea on Twitter, but whatever. Like, follow me and we'll see. Right, right. Well, nah, man, honestly, thank you for taking time out to talk with me tonight, man. This episode 11 of the podcast. I haven't got to interview you in a long time, man. It was a Saturday night shutdown, I feel like, the last time we talked to you. And that's been over two years ago. So it's see, uh, it's good yeah. to actually be able to chop it up with you, man. I can't wait to actually see you in person uh, here soon. 
And uh, yeah, man, keep on pushing. I can't wait to to follow up with you and, and hear about the the accolades this album is about to bring to you, man. So just uh, keep on going with what yeah. you're doing, bro, for real. Definitely appreciate it. You definitely keep doing what you're doing. You and Spaceship, keep moving, keep building the legacy, keep putting on for the Bay, Ways of the Bay, all that, like Ways of the Bay podcast, Ways of the Bay on Saturday Night Shutdown, like keep going. Yeah, you see like, it, man. You see it, bro. You <laughs> see it. <laughs> I personally think y'all should get the shows back, but, you know, it's, it's what y'all... That's a it's whole like, nother. Know, that's a whole nother discussion I, I, right there. I, I <laughs> we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it yeah. for sure, man. But yeah, the rest of the world out there, thank y'all for tuning in to Waves of the Beta Podcast tonight. Uh, we'll catch y'all in a couple of weeks with the next show. Uh, the next artist, uh, the Salt Tampa Bay related, right here, man. We're putting on for all the talented folks out there. And uh, once again, thank you, DeBron Kane, for being my guest on episode eleven of Waves of the Bay. With that being said, y'all be easy. Peace. Sabi forever. Stand for something. We appreciate the blessing, bro. Let's go. Ain't trying to bite it. We create it, then we ride it. We know what wave of seismic, and you really can't deny it. We just keep on soaring higher. You would swear it's autopilot, then you realize tone and shift and made a living off a of fly. We are the wave, and it's bigger than the moment. It's a movement that's progressing like the trucks that on opponents. It's time to stake our claim, it's time to bring the pain We're battle tested, now it's time to show it ain't a game It's time to make a lane, a different vibe, another wave We're known for killing shit, even help them pick their grades We're breaking free and chains and running towards the day Like the victories in plain sight, we're taking flight to reach heights These boys are tired of waiting, tired of playing, time to go This vibe's been percolating, gaining steam to explode Building anticipation, maybe time to reload We paid our dues, now we're coming back Kicking toes, we ain't got no time for peepholes. We keep evolving for our family and our peoples. Ain't playing fair in this game, we just some cheat codes. We are the wave and our hurricanes on beast mode. Welcome to Wave of the Bay.